Welcome back to FT Markets. It's been an interesting time for emerging markets over the last few months. Late last year and early this year, we saw a pretty concerted sell-off in most emerging market asset classes. But lately, we've seen a stabilization. And so the question now is, is the worst over? Here with me to discuss uh, this and several other interesting topics is George Huguet, uh, Global Investment Strategist at State Street Global Advisors. Welcome, George. Thank you. Could you let me know then your opinion on where we stand in general with emerging markets at the moment? Is the worst over or do we have more turbulence to come? You know, James, I do think that the worst is over. The reason for that is, is that emerging markets currently sell at about a 30% discount on a forward PE basis uh, relative to developed markets. The forward PE is about 10 times earnings and they're yielding close to 3%. Now there are a number of factors that continue uh, to preoccupy investors. China, of course, tapering political unrest in a number of countries. But we've seen a substantial adjustment in exchange rates and in asset prices. How bad is China? Uh, there's a lot of concern over the shadow financial system, the property market, slowing investment. What do you see is likely to transpire there over the next few months? Well, I think definitely risks are to the downside in terms of China meeting its 2014 growth target, which is about 7.5%. Uh, the first quarter numbers are thought to be more in the neighborhood of about 7.3%. But I think it's important for investors to bear in mind that China has an enormous amount of policy flexibility, both on the monetary policy side and on the fiscal policy side. We can expect a greater number of defaults, particularly in the third and fourth quarter of this year. While risks are to the downside, our firm believes that there will not be a major financial crisis in China nor that growth will come in below 7% this year. Um, people say that clearly China is having a, a, a rather marked effect on the commodity cycle worldwide. Um, but what about the liquidity cycle? When we think about US tapering and the unwinding of monetary stimulus in other economies, how serious a problem do you think that is for emerging market investors going forward? Do you think it's been overplayed? Or have we got much more of this to come? Actually, I do think it's been overplayed. If you look at the summary of uh, Fed projections, uh, we're not going to have the first hike in the funds rate until the third quarter of 2015. And even by 2016, the U.S. 10-year, according to the Survey of Professional Forecasters, is only at about 4%. What makes this particularly palpable is that tapering fears were accompanied by central banks and emerging markets, some of them missing their inflation targets, political unrest in Turkey, Thailand, Egypt, and other countries, electoral uncertainty. We have uh, elections in a number of different uh, countries. But I would say by far the biggest element affecting these asset prices is precisely uncertainty about the course of economic activity in China. Mm. And if we look at the chart, we can see the way a lot of those uncertainties that you've been talking about have really affected the MSCI EM index there. Yeah. Now we have the stabilization going on. Um, and what would you expect then looking forward? And what type of asset vehicle do you think is most attractive right. these days? So a key building block of equity market returns is return on equity of firms. This chart shows uh, the trailing return on equity of emerging markets relative to developed markets. And what we can see here is, is that this ROE is narrowing. This reflects a couple of things. One, uh, slowing demand in uh, some emerging economies, slowing commodity prices, uh, and also to some extent greater leverage. So a big question for investors going forward is whether these lines are going to cross. Another factor is the narrowing of real interest rate uh, differences between developed and emerging. Mm -hmm. My own view is, is that they're not going to cross. 
that uh, we're close to the bottom in terms of uh, return on equity in emerging uh, economies. And uh, it's still a healthy uh, about 12.5%. And don't forget that the emerging economies are still growing two and a half times as fast mm. as the developed world. So mm. uh, we, shouldn't, uh, we should view this in perspective uh, in terms of, let's say, growth prospects in Japan or the Eurozone. And, and what about asset vehicles? Um, some people talk about ETFs, other people um, prefer mutual funds. What, what would you say? Well, uh, ETFs present a number of advantages for investors because, first of all, they're low cost. They do provide daily liquidity and uh, they also are targeted. So if I just want to invest in Peru, I can find an ETF to invest in Peru. It's probably more difficult to find a Peru-only mutual fund, at least from a major provider. Maybe I could find it from a Peruvian asset management company. There's a variety of vehicles to choose from. Increasingly, institutional investors, including hedge funds, are using ETFs. And one should, as always, investigate before one invests. George Hugay, thank you very much indeed. Thank so you. there we have it. It seems that really uh, the stabilization phase in uh, emerging markets may in fact signify that the worst is perhaps over for this asset class. But looking forward, there are several concerns uh, that remain to be looked at, including the slowdown in China, which is obviously having a major effect on the commodity cycle worldwide.